Far, far away in the midst of the Indian Ocean and just off the eastern coast of Africa lies a lost world that still remains mostly untouched by modernization. Measuring 994 miles long and 360 miles wide, it is the world's fourth largest island, rich with diversity in both life and geography. Separating from the Indian Peninsula and drifting slowly across the Indian Ocean toward Africa for nearly 90 million years, the island's native plants and animals evolved in total isolation. Consequently, 90% of its wildlife doesn't exist anywhere else. When the people think of Madagascar, the imagination visualizes a magical lost land of limitless natural beauty and wonder. It's people living in a bygone era, simple and encumbered by modern cares and worries. Yes, life here is beautiful except when it comes to toilets. We share a toilet with my tenants. It's about seven to eight people all together. Our outhouses used to fill up every six months. And then when the cyclone comes and it rains, the toilet overflows and all the filth floats into our yard and we're afraid to get sick. Like most Malagasy people, Eleanor and her tenants don't have Western type toilets in their mud houses. In Antananarivo, the country's capital, cell phones are ubiquitous, but flushing toilets are not. City residents build latrines in their yards. Out in the country, villagers don't even have that. When nature calls, they head to the bushes or into the fields. The Malagasy's describe it as going au naturel. In fact, 40% of the population still practice open defecation on a daily basis. But latrines are also far from the ideal solution. When we moved here, our outhouse was far away. We shared it with other neighbors, some of whom didn't clean up after themselves, so it was often very dirty. Gloria Razafindia Miza, a mother and Antana Narivo resident, or Tana as the locals like to call it, works as a secretary for the Ministry of Health. She echoes the worries of all Malagasy mothers, terrified that their young children may one day fall into a pit and literally drown in shit. And when diarrhea came up at night, I was afraid to go there because it's far, dirty, and dark. We may think that diarrhea is only a nuisance, but for people in the developing world, it's a major medical concern and a massive health burden. In the Western world, human waste and the pathogens it carries disappear with a flush. But in places where toilet filth floats into people's homes with every torrential rain, diarrheal diseases take a huge toll on public health and the country's economy. In Madagascar, where cyclones hit regularly, the human waste problem is so pervasive, public health experts call it the silent slayer. The first and most obvious problem is human health issues caused by contaminated water. The lakes and rivers that people dump their waste in still remain the key water source for nearly half of the island's 24 million people. Sanitation is really a concern in Madagascar. But our real issue is uh, we do not really have like sewage uh, system. Before we just like uh, dig a hole, we just put our waste there and that's it. Human waste treatment, there was no treatment uh, before. And the concern is this, we throw it into the river, we put it and then we, we may eat it some, or, or drink it. To improve in the three most problematic waste management areas, removal, transportation and disposal or treatment, Wash Plus proposed three solutions. Luwat, a UK-based startup, is another company exploring solutions by running a pilot waste management program in Tana. The waste collection team starts the day early. 
and try to finish their rounds by noon before the blistering sun makes it impossible to walk and work in protective overalls, rubber boots, and gloves. Luwatt was started in London by American transplant Virginia Gardiner. The company designed a commodity-generating waterless toilet system that fits the gate's requirement, winning a grant of $1,269,936 to help bring the company to life. Lou Watt's toilet flushes without a single drop of water. Instead of a pipe system bringing waste to a processing plant, Lou Watt uses a hand delivery method. In their basic appearance, Luwatt toilets don't look that different from our Western Johns. They have plastic seats and flushing handles or pedals. Like this. But instead of releasing a swirl of water into the basin, the handles activate a white biodegradable film that envelopes and seals the waste, along with its offensive odor, into a collector underneath the toilet. Luwatt's service team collects and replaces the biodegradable bag once a week. If the bag fills up sooner, the toilet owners can send Luwatt a text message requesting service of the toilet. Luwatt uses an anaerobic digestion process where the collected and weighed human waste is mixed with organic waste, such as food leftovers from local restaurants and households. A carbon filter fitted on top of the buffering tank neutralizes the odor where the mix is stored. This is loaded into the pasteurizer and then treated with boiling water to kill pathogens, which is then passed on to the digester, where it produces liquid fertilizer and biogas. For Madagascar, where some families exist on $2 a day, this isn't cheap. But the old latrines also have a price tag, residents say, that can be high much higher. I think what we're paying for maintenance and collection is fair. It's even cheaper than maintaining the old pit toilets. Pit latrines fill up every six months and we don't have space to dig another hole in the yard. So we have to call someone to empty it. Usually it's men. They come with buckets and empty the pit. But we have to pay for it. And it's more expensive than this service. This toilet is convenient. Even my eight-year-old son can use it. I wanted this toilet for my safety and security. I wanted it so that only my family could use it and no neighbors who would leave it a mess. It's cleaner and healthier. All my family members like it, not just women, men too. The old toilet was dirty and smelly, and so no one could stay inside for too long. But with this toilet, men spend a lot of time inside. They can go in and sit and talk on the phone and go on Facebook. I don't know what they do, but they spend a long time. We may not have fallen victim to our ignorance yet, but the 1.7 billion children worldwide who are affected by diarrheal diseases each year are. The truth may be painful, or in this case, disgusting even, but silence kills, literally. Can an individual solve the sanitation crisis single-handedly? Maybe not, but a community that understands the consequences of their actions and are willing to give a shit can make a big difference. A real one that can save thousands of lives a year and the planet itself. As long as everybody poops, clean water, sanitation, and hygiene should be a fundamental human right. The world is getting more crowded by the day. Old solutions are running their course and new ones must be found. Madagascar offers an opportunity for us to try new solutions and the time is now for the world to start looking for those solutions. We can find them. We just need to keep looking. <laughs>